Well, Jim Pasula, thank you so much for joining us, for coming off the beach to actually do an interview with us at St. Paul's for our stewardship campaign. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Um, the first question I have is what has fed you spiritually at St. Paul's, especially, especially during this time of social distancing? Well, I'm going to tell you that even though a lot of people hate Zoom, I've been accustomed to it because I've used this kind of tool for years in my business. And I'd say the Zoom services have really helped me a great deal. And both here when we returned from the islands, but especially when we were down in St. Croix and I was able to dial in. Granted, it was at noon, you know, it was close to noon for most of the time that the services were being done at nine o'clock back in Colorado, but it really helped me feel like I was part of the community because I could look out there and I could look on the board and see that, well, you know, so-and-so's here and so-and-so's here and yeah, I know them and look for, you know, is so-and-so here. I, that made me, it made me feel much more connected to see people's faces and to be able to even send a little chat note saying, hi, Tim, how you doing? Or something like that. <laughs> and so I, that helped a great deal. And it's not as good as being in person, but it's certainly better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. And to think that you were joining us from so far away, which wouldn't have been possible before. I always won the one, I always won the contest for being joining from the furthest distance. And I do have to, and I gotta thank everybody because I know it I've done this kind of stuff and I know it doesn't happen, but yeah, I think we're gonna do this. Everybody who works so hard to put this stuff together, because you gotta learn how to do these things and coordinate them and all that. And so I thank you and I thank Lori and everybody else who's worked as the directors and to facilitate this for everybody, so. Absolutely, you're welcome. What has caused you to make St. Paul's your spiritual home? Well, the short answer is a neighbor two doors down and who, our former parish administrator, Linda Sandberg, lives two doors from me. And she noticed me wearing a t-shirt from a capital campaign at our parish in Minnesota and said, do you have, you know, asked if I was Episcopalian. I responded after I pulled my chin up off the floor because I ground because I didn't realize that it, I was marked on me or anything. <laughs> she noticed my t-shirt that yes. And she said, she suggested that I check out St. Paul's. I did. And after an appropriate, you know, period of wandering around to the other churches in the area determined St. Paul's was a good fit for me. It had people like me and it had people that were different from me. And I like the fact that I wasn't the oldest person there. And I like the fact that I wasn't the youngest person there either. So it was a good fit. You know, there are always parishes that are kind of out there as a friend said once, and I realized that St. Paul's is that parish in Fort Collins and that I'm probably a better fit for the parish that's out there. <laughs> that's a good fit, yeah. Out there in a good way. <laughs> um, what is your favorite memory of your life in the community at St. Paul's? I have not just one, I have three. I'll mention first off, because the chronological was first, was the time I was formally received into the church. And I didn't realize there was such a process, but I found out there was. And so I got formally received. And it, well, there were like, um, there were several of us who were received at the same time. It was on a Wednesday evening in December. I remember it well, because the next day I left for China and I was gone for 12 days. Right, you know, and then you didn't get back until right before Christmas. And so, and Bishop O'Neill was there and my wife came and she usually doesn't come to services. My wife came and she was really impressed with Bishop O'Neill. She said, boy, he's got a lot of star quality to him. <laughs> and I thought it was great. And I, re I thought it was great the way the entire congregation, the church, was, this is the old St. Paul's on Elizabeth Street. It was filled on a Wednesday night for people just to receive us. And now the bishop was there and he's, we know he's the big draw. 
But I thought it was pretty cool that everybody should, that was, so that was, that was good. And, you know, my sponsor gave me a small book of common prayer to carry with me. And my sponsor was Dick Woolley, and he was a wonderful person. He passed away about three years ago and just, just a wonderful guy. And he was, like I said, he was my sponsor. Then also I participated in the search team that brought Reverend Bonnie here. And that was in 2008. And that was a peak experience because I, because we were just kind of a disparate group, different ages, different perspectives and all that. But we all came together and I think we made a good hire for the congregation. It was a good hire for the congregation at the time. And the other one is probably a little bit out there. It's the funerals. Mm -hmm. It's, and the reason is that we're all sad that we no longer have the person with us. But we're also, we also know that a lot of times that the person's been suffering and they passed on literally to a better place and the entire congregation comes together to celebrate that person. And I just think that those, I, you know, I always, I try to serve them, you know, on the altar if I can. I've already done that in the past. And so those are also experiences where, again, the community comes together to get something, to do something, to be together. And they're also, it's not just the, and it's the entire community. It isn't just the people who say went to the eight o'clock service or whatever. It's the you know, entire community comes together. Mm. There's so a, a those, unity those there. Probably be the, yeah. So there's a theme there. And it's all about it's community and it's working together with other people to accomplish a good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I wonder if that answer to that question ties in with the next, which is what are you most thankful for in our common life at St. Paul's? Well, it does, as a matter of fact. And of course, the answer number one would be my fellow parishioners. And they, there's a common thing. We all come from lots of different walks, lots of different experiences. And some of us don't always vote the same way. And I've had interesting discussions with a number of our, with a number of past and current parishioners over those kinds of things. But what we share is that we worship God together and we believe in the same God. And I think that's a, and that I think is a powerful thing. We need more of that kind of stuff. Things that help draw us together as a parish. Well, we're doing things as a parish, and things as a community, as a country, then drive us apart mm -hmm. without making any other statements about what's going to happen in 12 days. And we are, a, I really do believe we are a community. And one place where I felt it particularly was, and it's weird we're doing this on October 23rd, because five years ago today, my wife had open heart surgery. And it was a tough time. And every time that I thought things were going to get really rough for me, somebody would reach out. And that was a good time. I'm reminded of that. Well, you've seen that. There's a para, There's a pseudo parable about walking on the beach. I was that person who was being carried. Mm. And people of St. Paul's did that. Mm. So. Thank you, Jim. So why do you choose? Why do you choose to give your time and talent and treasure to St. Paul's? Uh, community? Uh, well, going back to Luke, what is it that said, to whom much is given, much is expected? Mm -hmm. Something like that. I forget the exact words. You could probably quote it back to me verbatim. But it, I know it's in Luke, and that's the sentiment. And I am fortunate. I know, and it's even my, mo <laughs> it's my motto, that I am the luckiest SOB on God's green earth. And so I have been able, and I know that I've had particular talents and resources that have benefited me a great deal in my career and that have provided a comfortable living for Brenda and me and enable us to educate our daughter and do all those kinds of things. 
but at the same time, so I felt that I'll, I'm going to do my part and then some to be able to help this congregation, which I consider important. So I've done it from a financial standpoint, and there will also be some, you know, there will be some for St. Paul's in my will. I don't hope that that, that happens soon, but there will. We don't either. Yeah. And then also, at the same time, I have thought, of, you know, I've been able to give some time, less now because the last eight years we've gone back, you know, we spent a third of the time out of the, a third of our time in the Virgin Islands. You know, we go, for, we're going for four or five months. So that kind of restricts it. But in the times past, I did lots more and I still, and even I did the audits even when I was down from down there. And I still participate in investment committees and, you know, I help out other places when I can. And with my ability, with my management abilities or my ability to help structured budgets and identify issues and those kinds of things that are from a financial and management standpoint. And so I just feel though that if you got it, you ought to offer it. If you can afford to do it, then you ought to put it out there. And it's kind of my duty and I'm a pretty dutiful person when it gets down to it. Mm. So that's so that's where it comes from. Mm. Well, thank you for all the many ways you share and gift of your time and talent at St. Paul's through reading, even from the beach there, which you did earlier in this year and giving your talents and your, your treasure. We appreciate you, Jim, and thanks for the time today. Now go back and take a swim or a paddleboard. Adios. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>